here's the reality about Josh Allen. You have to see the glasses half full. Half, because that's his completion percentage? Yeah. <laughs> the greatest question of all drafts are, who are the best quarterbacks? Now, this draft, everybody talks about four great quarterbacks. We know four great quarterbacks are not in this draft. So it's going to be hit or miss. Who do we like and who don't we like? I guess at this point, the, the, the most recent report is there could be six first round quarterbacks. Mallory, you watch more college football than anybody on the planet. Take me through who you like from a college perspective. My favorite quarterback in this class is Josh Rosen, and it has been since he was a senior in high school. That has not changed because he's been an elite professional prospect since he was playing high school football. Wait, did you watch him play high school football? If you're not watching the Elite 11, what are you doing? You're just <laughs> letting Trent Dilfer down. <laughs> Baker Mayfield is my favorite, but I think Josh Rosen is the best. I would rank them, just personal power rankings here, not necessarily like contingent uh, on, on any given team's need or scheme fit. Rosen, Mayfield, Darnold, jawline and all. Mm. It's part of it. You're opting in to everything. Lamar, mm -hmm. then Josh Allen, and then Mason Rudolph. That's so my order for the six. It's interesting you, you said that about fit because I've gone through all 32 teams in my mind just now, and Josh Allen fits on zero of them. That's harsh. <laughs> it's harsh. Go, Mike, Is that well, tell I me mean, on look, Josh Allen. Look, look, I think here's the reality about Josh Allen. It, it, you have to see the glasses half full, right? So you've got to believe that. Half because that's his completion percentage? Well, yeah. you know, is that... there is certainly, there's certainly a degree of that that you've got to worry about. The fact that he's only played against two teams in the top 25 has to worry you, okay? Level of comp is all that matters in college football. The problem that I'm having, though, is understanding the Josh Allen fascination because of exactly what you said. It, it, Lamar Jackson, we know him as a national product. We, we watched him obsessively for two seasons now. He was an object of fascination in our office. Josh Allen was not. Josh Allen is a is prospect hype incarnate. So how did that happen? What is it about him? These guys build momentum, and there's really not a lot of substance behind them. And the, the hardest part is being a personnel guy is blocking out this perception of players. This is why we have such bad drafts. It's because there's a perception, but it doesn't always meet reality. And I think a little bit of the case with Josh Allen. He goes to the Senior Bowl and has a great game. You and I could go to the Senior Bowl. There's, there's two coverages in the Senior Bowl. There's cover one and cover three. That's it. If a quarterback can't play good in the Senior Bowl, he can't play good anytime, right? So for me, it's very difficult to understand how it just keeps going, especially when you watch him against Nebraska, you watch him do the things, you know, you got to say, wait a minute, there's a lot of things he's got to do. Plus, he won the interviews. Okay, so he won Miss Congeniality at the Combine. Because he, he is devoid of personality. He killed the interviews. Everybody left the Combine saying, oh my God, Josh Allen's a great kid. And that's a great momentum to have. Josh Allen is the hype. You said, where did it come from? It's just the, the continuing obsession with measurables. Like, it's the reason Blaine Gabbert got drafted where he did. He's tall and he has a strong arm. That is not enough to make you a successful quarterback anymore. How's Brock Osweiler doing right now? He's tall. Did that work out? He might be too <laughs> tall. He's too tall. <laughs> I think that's a valid point. Look, I, I think you're right on measurables, but I will say this. Drew Brees was the number one tennis player in the state Josh of- Josh Rosen. Josh elite Rosen. Elite tennis talent. Of Texas, okay? <laughs> And, you know, Russell Wilson was a world-class. I mean, there's like, I don't see that with Baker. Like, Baker doesn't have that world-class athleticism to get him over the top. So that's the only thing I would say. That's why, you know, you know, and I think there's some things that happen there. But I get your point. I think we do get too caught up in measurables, especially when, you know, we see a guy produce. But what worries me is the level of comp. Yeah, I totally agree with you. You know, Josh Allen, when he was at junior college before Wyoming, his completion percentage, speaking of level of, of competition, was 49%. So he's always been bad. That's your completion percentage on hitting deadline. <laughs> That's not true. Like it. It's much lower. <laughs> um, and so you get into a situation where you just you can't blame the receivers at Wyoming. We saw, I mean, it looked like the Wyoming receivers were paid to drop passes at his pro day. He looked, they looked really bad, but you can go back into the archive and not see a situation where Josh Allen looked good. I think you're right, Mallory. I don't think NFL teams know how to identify good quarterback. The college to pro transition is harder than ever. The spread offense is harder than ever. But basically every single team 
has to deal with that, and yet they haven't made any adjustments. We're still worried about Mason Rudolph's adjustment. We're still worried about uh, Baker Mayfield's adjustment. And yet we've had five or six years to realize how to build an offense around those guys. There are teams that are doing it. The Philadelphia Eagles just built an offense that was essentially a spread offense and had the best team in the NFL for the entire entire time. And so now we're saying, oh, what do you do with Baker Mayfield? Oh, I saw Mason Rudolph criticized today because he had too many open receivers. Well, figure it out. You have the open receivers, and then you win with Mason Rudolph. Well, I come to this as a Jets fan, right? So I'm I'm in a lot of pain. Our condolences. This is, this is this is really only the third or fourth I, time. I'm a Jet fan too. My son coaches there. For full disclosure, and, and I I need your son to coach whoever they draft really well. But the thing is, is they've only really drafted a franchise quarterback three, maybe four times in their team history. So this is a huge draft for them. I understand the the way that we see Josh Allen, which is big arm, big measurables kind of a, a, a prototype scout's dream in some ways, but when you see him on, on when you see him playing, you're like, this guy can't hit a receiver. When you think about Josh Rosen is he is a traditional, uh, has all the tools, but has some injury concerns, you know, what was not as effective and successful in college as we thought he should have been. Check in with Jim Mora on that. Right. And then we know that, you know, there's something about Baker Mayfield that is charismatic. That is, he has a, a winner's personality that is fun, but he's undersized and maybe he's not as He's never going to be as great as Drew Brees. Sam Darnold, for the most part, has been the consensus number one quarterback for months. And I don't know why. Should I be desperate for the Jets to trade up again to get Sam Darnold? I think the Jets made the decision, look, we like these three guys. We're going to get one of them, so we'll get up there. We can't fall in love with anybody. I think Darnold's concerns are you got to be careful. A guy that doesn't protect the ball in the pocket, yep. you know, it throws interceptions. Those are hard things to change. Darnold, 13 interceptions last year. That's just way and too many. And nine lost fumbles, I believe. Yeah. On top of that, he had 20 interceptions in his last 20 games. And it's, it's two issues with him in terms of ball protection. It's just, is he making the right reads? No, often. And his windup, his actual throwing motion is terrifying. Like in a lot of ways, he's he's similar to a pitching prospect who has an elite four seam fastball and you believe the stuff, but you don't trust the mechanics and you're certain he's gonna have Tommy John by June of his rookie year. Like that's really what Darnold feels like to me. I think despite that and those very real concerns, he I do not think he has the highest ceiling of these quarterbacks. I, I definitely think he has the highest floor. I think he's the lowest risk pick, and that, more than anything else, is why he's been something close to a consensus number one until recent days when the Allen Browns rumors have really picked up in earnest. If he's going to actually have arm problems, we need to keep him out of Sean's orbit because he's got some pretty bad PTSD as far as just young stars with meeting Tommy. Healthy Jones. rotation right now. Yeah, well, I, you know, my favorite quarterback of my lifetime is Chad Pennington, who <laughs> couldn't throw a balled-up piece of paper in a garbage can. But, he could uh, if the garbage can was I, on his I lap. I think that's a great that's point, true. though. I think, the, I think that what Kevin was talking about, and this is what we miss, and this is something Walsh talked about for years, is Pennington was in an offense that suited his skill set really well. Uh, you know, and, and I think that this is the missing link here. If you draft one of these guys, then you've got to put them in the right system and the right – and you got to have the right team around them. You can't just say, okay, we're going to draft this guy. There are a lot, truly, quarterbacks in football are like baseball stadiums. You have to build your team around them. And you can't just assume that it's all going to make – like, Darnold's just not going to come to Cleveland and make them better. You know, and Ro Rosen's not going to go to the Jets and just instantly make them better. They've got to add pieces and then fit the offense around them. And very few teams can do that. Do we think, think there is a true culture-changing quarterback in the draft, though? Is there one guy who's going to come in and – radically alter the future, like Russell Wilson, like Andrew Luck, guy who comes in and he says, wow, their future is incredibly bright, almost right away. No, but it depends what your culture is now, if that makes sense. No one's going to come in and make a losing team a winning team. That's probably not going to happen. If you have a winning that's culture... Terrible. <laughs> that's terrible. That's why it's such a hype draft class. Because it's the NFL draft, and yeah. that's what we do. Because even if the, all the quarterbacks were terrible, we'd still be doing this video because the world needs draft time. I think that generally, I think if you look at just the way these quarterbacks are built, guys like Baker Mayfield, guys like Lamar Jackson. If, you, if you're an owner or your GM or your coach and you go to your offensive coordinator and say, show me an offense in which we can win with these guys, and the offensive coordinator can't do it, you should fire your offensive coordinator. Because these guys, are, they can make plays and you can build an offense. It's 2018, there's so much technology now, you can import, you can literally just take Oklahoma's playbook. And there are ways to import it, and, and, and you change your protection a little bit, but you can run 80% of the same place. You can win with any of these guys as long as you have the right culture that they're coming into.